data structures. So far, we review the atomic data. We review numbers, strings, and so on. But, well, primitive data types, primitive elements, fine. But what happened with arrays? And, well, well what happened with linked lists or trees or stacks and so on? Because if you think about these ones, what you did, those are classes or struct. And if they are classes, well, we would like to think about objects. So the big question right now is, what I do with this one? And more important, what I can do with all of those in Lisp? Because I do not have classes, I do not have a struct instruction, and so far we haven't used our square bracket friends, right? Well, the only data structure that you have in Lisp is the list. Remember, everything is a list. If you remember, everything in Lisp is a list. Uh, in particular, one particular type of list are the functions. Because if you remember the list is anything that the start with open parenthesis, closing parenthesis. And then we start talking about functions and we decide that functions are open parenthesis, closing parenthesis, but the first element is the name of the action, the name of the function that you want to execute. And all the other elements are used the parameters. Uh, in particular, inside of the functions, we review predicates. That is the same, it's a function that have a name, have parameters, but that particular function return nil or t because it's a Boolean result, yes, no. Okay, we reviewed these ones and we reviewed these ones. I need to talk about the things that are here. I need to talk about things that are list, but are not functions. Well, if I want an array, an array can be represented with a list. The only thing that I need to do is very simple. I can open parentheses, close parentheses. And you know what? I want an array. And in that array, I want to store the numbers one, two, three, four. That one could be the representation in list of an array with four elements, four integers. It's a list, it's a list with four integers. Everything is fine, but there is a problem there. The problem is that by default, Lisp is going to understand that this is a function and that this one is the name of the function. And it's going to try to execute that order. And obviously there is no uh, function with the ID one. That is not a name uh, that exists. So probably it's going to tell me that I have an error. What I need to do is to tell Lisp, hey, this one is not a function. Forget about your default that anything is a function. This is just information together in a list. So one new element. In order to tell Lisp that something is just a list, a trivial, common, simple list with information, that Lisp do not need to execute that one as a function. The only thing that you need to do is option one, add here a quote, a single quotation mark. 
if you put a single quotation mark before the open parenthesis, you are telling Lisp, A, this thing is a Lisp, not a function. This thing do not need to be executed. Therefore, this one is an element, is a value, is not the name of something that you need to do. So, single quotation mark. You do not need to close the quotation mark. It's just one, one apostrophe. That's it. Like in this example. That example is a list. You can think about that one like an array. The first element, hello. The second one is word. The next one's numbers. One, two, three. It's an array with five elements. And because we are not using data types, Lisp do not care if you mix elements with different types. If you mix numbers with variables, with strings, with characters, or any other thing. We don't care about the type, we just put together information. And that is the reason because we call this list, not arrays, because by definition arrays are all the elements the same type. But when you move to list, like linked list, well, you can have objects that encapsulate information and that information can be anything. The thing is, you know that you can do something like this in Java, but how many lines of code do you need to put in a program in Java to achieve something like this? If you remember inheritance, polymorphism, linked list, a lot, several. Here, it used by default the behavior. Now, when you put that in Lisp, what you are going to get as a confirmation that the interpreter understood what do you want is it's going to print your list with all the values. The only thing that is going to happen is everything is going to go uppercase. Every single letter that you use, doesn't matter for what, is going to go uppercase except if you use the quotation marks and that something is a string. So it's going to print use the information that you put. That is the confirmation that I didn't run anything. I understand that this is not a function. I understand that the only thing that you are doing is to put information together like in an array, in a list, period. Now, something that happened, and I am sure that you noticed this, the rule is very, very simple. You just put an apostrophe and single quotation mark at the beginning. Some people do not like that one. Why? Because think about it. You are reading a book or you are reading my slides and you can read this and this one is an apostrophe or maybe it's kind of a mistake or if this is something printed, it's like, oh, maybe the paper is not clean. Maybe there is something there. So it's not easy to read. So the people propose a second option. If you do not like the apostrophe, your second option is instead of one symbol, the apostrophe, use the keyword quote. But if you are going to use the keyword quote, Open parenthesis, close parenthesis. So it's a function, quote. It's a function to tell Lisp that whatever I am going to put next is not a function. That whatever I am going to put next is just information together inside of parenthesis. Option number one with the apostrophe, option number two using the function quote, both are going to do the same, help you to define a set of values together in a data structure list. So far, these two lines are the equivalent to, I am going to use Java, something like one, two, three, four. This is what you do with Java. Now, the next step is I want to store these things in an array 
of integers, right? That could be the full instruction in Java. I want to create an array, integers, and those are the values. The equivalent to that line in Lisp, well, I cannot create an array. I am going to create a list. One, two, three, four, no commas, use the white space. And I want to store that one, I can use the apostrophe here. And I want to store that one in a variable named A. So I want to use the equal. The equal in Lisp, if you remember, was this set F. The variable name is going to be A, and this is the values. So that could be my instruction in Lisp that is the closest thing to this one. Now, you can do this, or you can do, well, I want to do the set F in A, and because I do not like the apostrophe, open parentheses, quote, parentheses, one, two, three, four, parentheses, parentheses for the quote, parentheses for the set F. So I use another function, in this case, quote, instead of using the single apostrophe. The next thing, this one is arrays and arrays. Uh, what do you think about this one? Well, how many elements do I have in this list? Can you agree with me that the first element is what? The second element is? The next element is all this thing inside of the parentheses? Something. And the last one is here with this one. Okay. Uh, did you notice that inside of the parentheses, what I have is two things? This one. is a 2D array. Do you remember how do you represent in Java 2D arrays? Do you remember that in Java you start with this thing and then one row, second row, and so on? Well, the only thing that we do here is to replace the curly bracket with parentheses. But if this is a 2D array, uh, there is only one line with two elements. The others have only one element. Yes, these are empty, empty. And empty. If you use the quote with a symbol, what you get is that symbol alone, that symbol like a combination of characters. My last example here. Why this is my result? When you put quote, you are telling Lisp, what I am going to give you is not an instruction. What I am going to give you is information. And just following the example that I showed you before, after quote, all this, I have the plus, that is one element. I have four, that is the second element. Then I have the asterisk, the three, the two and the nine together because they are in one parenthesis. So this is one thing. This is another thing. If you think about it, that is what you have. This, that one. Now, obviously, right now, you are thinking about the memory of your computer. And you know that this thing really is not going to be a 2D array just because if you implement that way, well, there is a lot of space that you are not using. So a better implementation, the one that you follow, well, linked lists. So you have this linked list in which 
the first element is the plus, the second element is the four, the next element is the beginning of, is the last one because the linked list finished here, but this one have another linked list in which the first element is the asterisk, the second one is the three, the next one is the two, and the last one is the nine, and finish there. So you have a linked list with linked list inside. And obviously you have here the beginning of everything. It's technically a tree, isn't it? Yes. So you're telling me that in Lisp, the only data structure is the list. And with a list, you can represent an array. With a list, you can represent a linked list. And yes, with a list, you can represent trees. All your data structures can be reduced to parentheses and elements. That's it. Questions? Good. Guys, see you in the next lecture. Thank you.